All right, in this video, we're gonna pick right up from where we left off in part two of weather graphs where we did the graph layout. We created something similar to this and all I've done here is I've changed the thickness of my stationary lines. I've also adjusted my graph height to 300, but remember we did talk about this in part two. I got it set to 300 just to remind us and also help us with some math that we're gonna see work out. Custom is gonna be doing all of this math it's gonna be based off of this graph height that we have here. So again, before we proceed, please make sure you've watched part two, part one, and the introduction. So going over to our items, inside of this component that we've been working on, I have a bars overlap group, but I don't have anything inside of it yet. We're getting ready to work on that now. So create that overlap group, and inside of it, let's add a rectangle. I'm gonna name this rectangle max two. Now, max two is basically going to be the bar for our maximum temperature two days away. So this rectangle, let me set that, it needs to have a width for the width of our bar. How wide do we want our bar to be? Bar width. Let's go ahead and change the paint since we're doing a maximum. Let's change this to our max color. And the position, all of these, here is the thing that makes it line up perfectly. You have to anchor this in the center. Um, and it's gonna be, all of these are gonna be anchored in the center. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a code to use some top padding to bump our bars down to where they need to be in the event, you know, we're not at the max or we're not at the min, which is gonna happen more times than none. Now, some of you may be thinking, well, couldn't we just position these at the bottom of this piece and then we can have the bars grow up to their max or grow up to their min? That would work, but it doesn't line up perfectly unless you did some little tweaking here and there. With the way I'm gonna do this here, it's gonna line up perfectly every single time. So the center anchor is gonna be key. Of course, when we come over here, we're still gonna be centered, but we're gonna be on the left side and we're gonna be on the right side based on our padding when we do the one day max and three day max. But anyway, back to this rectangle, our two max or max two, the height, we're gonna go through this step by step. So the height, first of all, what we wanna do is we wanna find the difference between the maximum for this particular day. So this is two days away. So WF, max two days away. We wanna find the difference between that and our global variable three day min. The difference between those two temperatures, the maximum for two days away and our three day min based on this global variable that we created back in part one, that difference is 25 degrees. Now let's look at another thing too. Let's look at GV max min difference, okay? So that's 34. What we wanna do is we wanna find a fraction of these. What fraction is 25 of 34? That's why I had the calculator over here. 25 divided by 34, we're looking at 0.735 blah, 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 blah. Well, I want to do that. So I want to find that fraction over here in custom. To do that, I'm gonna put parentheses around this difference so that we obey order of operations because we wanna find the difference first then we want to divide by GV max min difference, okay? So notice we're getting that same decimal, rounding's a little bit different, but it's not that big of a deal. It's still gonna be doggone near perfect. Now also remember GV graph height, just to show you graph height. If my maximum was all the way at the top of my graph, this bar would need to be 300 pixels or units tall. It's not gonna fill up the graph 100%. It's gonna be 73 or roughly 74% of 300. That's how tall we want this rectangle to be. So check this out. Over here on my calculator, I'm gonna find this fraction of, that means multiply, 300. We want this bar to be 220 pixels tall. That's gonna be the correct height based off of our graph height, which is currently set to 300. Well, how do we get that to show up in custom? We come back over here to our little formula and we multiply by GV graph height. And notice that is returning the same number that we see in our calculator. So really what we're doing is we're finding a fraction of our graph height based on the difference between whatever day we're working with, in this case, day two, and the three day min, 
we're finding what percentage, what fraction is that of the difference between the maximum and minimum over the next three days. And then we're gonna multiply that by the graph height. That's exactly what we're doing over here. That's the way that formula is going to work. So now you see that bar sitting right here. Well, there's a problem, right? That bar is not starting at the bottom. Now, like I said a while ago, you wanna keep the anchor in the center. We don't want to position this at the bottom um, well, first of all, you notice it's not really changing anything, but what I want to do is I want to leave this positioned in the center and I want to apply some top padding to this bar to push it down. So notice if I come in here and do some top padding, it's pushing it down. Well, how much do we want to push it down? That is another formula that will dynamically change based on our temperatures. So for top padding, using the formula or the calculator, we want to take our three day max, that's a global variable, we want to find out how far is that maximum temperature, that WF max two, how far is that from the three day max? So the maximum for two days away is only nine degrees lower than the three day max. We want to push it down that nine, that nine over what? 34, nine over 34. Well, how do we do that? Find the difference, and just like in that previous formula, we divided it by GV, max min difference. Remember that? So if we take nine, which was the difference between our maximum for two days away and our three day max global variable, if we take nine and divide it by 34, notice we're getting that 0.26, same thing over here, right? Well, we want to multiply it. Well, I'm over here on my calculator, but I wanna come over here and I wanna multiply that by GV graph height. So it's gonna push it down. That top padding is going to push it down 79 pixels or units. And just like over here on my calculator, notice it's returning the same number. So if we check this, notice that it pushes it down perfectly right there to the bottom, that stationary line that we have there. Now, if you have thick stationary lines, what it's going to do is it's going to push it right smack in the middle of that stationary line that you have. But since my stationary lines are so thin, it looks like it's sitting right on it. And that's exactly what I want. Now let's be real observant here and notice that, you know, what is our maximum for two days away? 62 degrees? Well, if we look right here, 54 and 71, we got this stationary bar in between them. That stationary bar actually does represent a number. If we take 71 plus 54, these two numbers that we see here right now, add those together, divide by two, we get 62.5. So notice this 62 is just a hair below that 62.5. It's all going to be proportionally scaled based on the way that we have these number global variables set up, the way our formulas are set up, everything's gonna line up perfectly. With that said, let's go ahead and do the minimum for this one. So I'm gonna copy and paste, and I'm gonna set this to min two. And all we have to do now is go in here, assuming that you kind of understand the math that's going on here or whatever, all we have to do is go in here and change the words max to min in all of our formulas, change our color to min color, and change our position. Make sure we change that to min instead of max because we're working on the minimum now. And I don't know if you noticed that, but a, a moment ago, the green was like up here. Well, now it's push down and it's right where it needs to be. It's laying right on that stationary line. That's exactly what I want it to do. All right, now let's find one where, I wanna come over here to this three day piece here. The three day piece. I'm gonna go ahead and basically, we can take these two pieces, the max two, let's copy and paste that and let's call it max three. Now inside of this code, since we're talking about our max for three days away, leave the word max there, but change the number to three go over to position and change the max two to a max three. Some real quick adjustments now that we're using, and the formulas aren't that long. Do you see that? Because we're taking care of the long junk back here in our text globals. Now you don't see that one over there because what we also have to do is we have to apply some left padding to get it to line up. But notice it is, you know, already positioned where it needs to be in terms of sitting on the bottom stationary line but let's apply the correct left padding, which is going to be, you guessed it, just like we did with our dates, the padding global variable, now it's gonna be lined up directly with that date. But here's something interesting that's getting ready to happen with our min three. So copy, paste, 
I'm gonna change that min two there to min three. Now I want you to notice something that's gonna happen here. So for min three, I wanna come into this min and where I had min two, change it to min three, check that. The paint's fine because we already adjusted our paint color. Position, I need to change this to min three. Now, we have a problem. We don't see a green, do we? Well, first of all, I need to make sure I do that left padding again. But we still don't see it, do we? Here's why. The minimum for three days away is 37 degrees. I know that's not real clear, but that is a 37. The minimum that we have set up right now is also 37 based on our three day min. Well, if you've watched the other videos, I mentioned that I was gonna come back and talk about these numbers, the plus one and the minus one. This can give you a little bit of cushion. You can do minus, I'm gonna do like a minus five to show you this, but what I wanna show you, I mean, look, I don't see a green bar here because that green bar has a height of zero. And the reason why that height is zero, notice the height is zero because the difference between right now, WF min three and the three day min, well, both of these are 37. So 37 minus 37 gives you zero. Well, if we come in here and adjust our three day min by taking away a little bit, that will allow us to have some difference between these two numbers which will ultimately let you see that green bar. So let's go fix that before we come in here and do our WF max and min for, the, for, or for one day away. So I'm back in my globals. I'm going to adjust the three day min and notice how I have a minus one between those last two parentheses. I'm gonna do like a minus five. You don't have to do minus one. The more you subtract, the more of that green bar you're gonna see. And as you can see, it is showing, and you're thinking, uh-oh, it's not lining up right. Well, that's just the advanced editor. Let's save this, let's go back to the home screen, and everything is still looking perfect. So all that was there was the advanced editor not showing it correctly. And then a little refresh there, it looks like it is working just fine now. All right, so with all that done, we can go back into our bars overlap group. I'm gonna take the max and min three, I'm gonna copy and paste both of these at one time, nothing wrong with doing that. Changing these to max one and min one, and all you have to do is go in here and change the ones, the threes to ones, and all of your codes. You need to change the padding to go in the other direction, and you should be good to go. So I'll go do my max one real quick. changing that left padding, completely taking it off, knocking it down to zero, and we're gonna make that right padding have that same global. That's gonna bump it over to the left. All right, now the bar doesn't look right because of our top padding. Let's go change that to max one. And what you're gonna notice here is that this bar completely fills up the whole graph from the bottom to the top. Well, way to get a little bit of cushion between here and here. It lines up perfectly. I mean, look at that. It's touching that stationary line exactly where it needs to. But if you want a little bit of cushion, you can go back into the three day max text global and you can change that to a plus one, plus two, plus three, or whatever you want to. And now fixing our min one, changing our threes to ones. Go over to position. Remember to change your left padding to right padding. And then, so the min bar will line up. Let's change our top padding to min one. So there we have it, our bar graph is done. And again, if you want a little bit of cushion there, you can change that three day max. I'll go back to my globals and fix that real quick by going right here to three day max. You don't have to subtract or add the same number that we subtracted. We can add two. I think I subtracted like five. I forgot what I subtracted back here. It doesn't matter. But what this is gonna do is it's gonna give you a little bit of cushion between your maximum and the top. Basically what's gonna happen here, you should always see the green bars and, you and the red bars should never touch the top if you're using some pluses and some minuses in this piece here. Now it looks like, is that lining up correctly? It looks like that red's a little bit off, doesn't it? Well, I guarantee you if we save this, go back to the home screen, everything is lining up perfectly. So before I let you go, uh, just bear in mind, you can come in here and you can change these number global variables, making our bars wider 
we can come and make our stationary lines a little bit thicker. We can change the hole height, which does not change the graph height. This will change the graph height. As you can see, I am changing the graph height and everything is staying the way it should. Mess around with your color global variables and all that stuff to get the look that you like. Change your background color, make your background color completely transparent. It's entirely up to you. And there you have it. Finally, we have the bar graph made. The next part will be the line graph, which requires even more math. If you remember the distance formula from your Algebra 1, Algebra 2 days of high school, and if you took some pre-calculus uh, finding angles, we would have to do some inverse trig functions in order to get our lines to show up correctly when we create the line graphs. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.